As Helen said, I'm Meg Westbury. I'm with the Judge Business School. I actually don't have any particular business background per se. It just it's an interesting you know journey that got me there. Um, I li I'm a librarian, but I actually have a um, strong background with a master's degree in cultural anthropology as well. So I have a lot of um, you know interests and concerns that are very similar to humanities and social sciences researchers. Um, so let me just go ahead and bring up the presentation. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so as it pretty much says on the tin, this is a 30 things in 30 minutes presentation. Actually, my talking right now doesn't count for my 30 minutes, just to let you know. Um, I developed this a little while ago for JBS, um, just as a way to introduce people to some new media tools. These are not necessarily all the most cutting edge newest of new stuff. In fact, some of these things have been out a while, but I picked them because I thought that they would be useful to researchers over at JBS, particularly the ones who are involved in the more sort of social sciences or qualitative end of business research. Um, so that was the rationale for everything that I picked. And for everything that I picked, there was at least one alternative, if not five or six. So it was incredibly hard to cull through a list and develop something that was merely 30. So in fact, you're getting about 34. And the overall sort of evolution is going to be tools that help you find information, tools that help you organize information, um, help you present it, and then some uh, task management tools. So that's um, going to be sort of the, that's the order that we're going through. Um, I will be talking very fast. And I see that somebody's already tweeting, um, has got, is tweeting each and every one of these, um, these things. So well done. Um, your fingers must be on fire at the moment. So, but they're, they're already up on Twitter too, as a reminder. We've got the handout which is coming around. There's also, if I could remind you, there's this one so we can get a sense of which ones you already know about. So if you have time as we go along just to fill some of these in, that would be great. Does anyone not have one? Yeah. Am I sending clear to everybody in the back as well? <coughs> okay, I've had a lot of coffee and I've had a lot of sugar this morning. And <laughs> I was jumping around a lot in the last time I did this, um, but since I'm being videotaped, perhaps I'll be a, a tad more subdued. Okay, now are you ready? Okay. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so the first tool is StumbleUpon. Um, StumbleUpon is actually a really very handy tool. Um, it's a serendipitous web discovery tool. So um, based on interests that you set up, um, based on um, websites that you say you like, it helps find other tools for you. So it's not for going out, or other sites for you. So it's not for going out and finding a specific one, but it's for finding out sites that you might not have known about before. And it's just really fun. And you may see stumble upon icons on other sites. Once you set up an account, you can like sites that you find online and that will be added to your stumble upon sort of profile. So next time you go to stumble upon, you can stumble you click the yellow button and it just comes up with new sites that might be of interest to you. I find it really fun and handy. The next one is called Similar Pages. Um, this is also extremely good for finding new content. Um, it's a little bit more uh, fine-grained than StumbleUpon, so you, um, you go ahead and actually type in a site that you know of and it will tell you other sites that are related to it. And you can continue to fan out on these trees. So the one on the left is the site you typed in and the one on the right is the tree of related sites. And you can just continue to drill, sort of drill down and find related sites. So it's very good for finding new content. The next one is Reddit. This is a bit, this is a very old site. It's been around for ages. It's perhaps competing for the ugliest website on, online. Um, it's very bare bones in terms of what it looks like, but in terms of content, it is incredibly rich because it's a, it's a news site where people are ranking stories that they feel are important to them. It's a great way for finding out non-mainstream news, things that are going on in the popular um, press and media, and they're actually Reddit channels, um, like explain it to me as if I were five, and then it takes sort of breaks down complicated political and social issues and, and makes them sort of describes them in very simplified terms. That's just one of many, many of the channels. So I find Reddit, I could just spend all day on Reddit. It's got it's incredibly interesting. Okay, Technorati. Now, a lot of these tools are going to be more useful to you once you start using um, a lot of the um, sort of the basic tools that Helen is going to teach you about in this class. You'll teach each other. But Technorati is a search engine for blogs. Very, very useful for finding hidden gems in the blogosphere. Um, 
there are so many scholarly blogs out there and so much interesting material being put out on blogs. So Technorati is a good way of doing that. It only finds English language blogs at the moment though, um, but it, I find it very, very useful. The next one is Listorius. This is a Twitter management tool. So once you get going on Twitter, you may wonder, my God, how can I actually find anything in this, you know, this, this fire hose of information that's now coming to me over Twitter? So Listorius is very handy for helping you find um, Twitter hashtags that will be useful for you, Twitter lists, et cetera. It's a search engine for Twitter. Sometimes you have to dig a little below your search results to page two or three to get, actually get something useful, but it's a very, very handy tool. Okay, Paperly. This is one of my new personal favorites. This is a Twitter management tool as well. The reason why I like Paperly is because you can take a hashtag or a topic in Twitter and it, 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 takes, it searches your Twitter feed and on a daily basis sends you this newspaper of all the stories that are related to that topic or that hashtag in Twitter. So example, you're, you'll learn about a hashtag called PhD chat. People who are working on their PhDs want to talk about it over Twitter. And this then would be the daily summary that comes for, um, for that, and it's a very handy way of being able to filter through all the stuff that's coming through your Twitter feed. Okay, social mention. This is very good for gauging a topic or even your own um, web presence. So if you're curious to know all the places online where you are mentioned or your particular research topic is mentioned, social mention is extremely, is extremely w interesting way of doing this. So in this case, I typed in green energy economics and here are various sites where it's mentioned. It even gives you a sense of the reach, like just how far are, is this topic or, uh, sort of reaching out on the internet? Um, is, it this, is the sentiment about that topic positive? Is it negative? Um, there are these sort of very interesting sort of m measures along the right-hand side, which you should take with a pinch of salt, of course. But still, I think it's an interesting tool to look at from time to time. Oh, you're all turning your pages over. <laughs> so that must mean we've moved on. Okay, so Scribd, Scribd? Anyone know how to pronounce this? Okay, I don't, but I've been using it for a while. I really like it. It's a, like a YouTube, but for documents. It's a place where you can go and search for um, new research on topics. Anyone can publish to here. So it's not as if it's a peer-reviewed website. Um, but you find all sorts of interesting things. There are ebooks up here. There's gray literature that isn't going to get published in a journal anywhere. Um, there's, there are interesting papers that people put up. You can put your own things up here, your own research in whatever state it is, and people can find it here as well. Um, I, and so again, very interesting for seeing a reach of a topic, new research that might be on a topic, et cetera. Net Vibes. This has been around for ages, so a lot of you probably have heard of this one. Um, but I'm going to show you a way Net Vibes um, can be used in an interesting way. So Net Vibes, it, the, uh, Net Vibes is a way of setting up, um, it's just a customized desktop portal for yourself with things like the news and weather every time you log in. But th I'm using this to pull RSS feeds of recent tables of contents of journals. So these are geology journals, but you could set up any kinds of journals that have an RSS feed for a table of contents. RSS feed, what the heck is that? You'll learn about this, um, and I can show you as well. But anyway, you, you, find, you get the feed, you pull it in through NetVibes, and every day you get the new table of contents of the journals you want to follow. It's very handy. And if you're logged into the university network, you can then drill through the library's journal subscriptions and, fingers crossed, get to the full text of the article. Right, Xanran. Xanran is a search engine for, for data and statistics. It's like Google, but you only pull in data and statistics. Um, and what I like about it is um, it pulls in a lot of gray literature that you're not going to find on Google at all. Um, and another really handy feature of it is if you hover over the left-hand side of one of the reports, it actually gives you a preview of the numbers, so you don't actually have to drill through to a PDF to find what it is they found. It's, very, it's a very nice little tool. Okay, Easily. I like Easily. Easily is a, um, it's basically an infographic tool. So it's very new and there are actually a whole handful of other ones like this out there. But if you want to make a really nice looking infographic, say for a, a conference, um, you can use one of their templates or build your own. And um, they're, they're very colorful, very jazzy looking. I like them a lot. Um, and it's still a relatively new product. So anything you make from here, even from their templates, not many people are, are going to know about. All right, Bubbleus. 
that's a cute name, Bubbles is a mind mapping tool, which, which I personally like when I'm just trying to brainstorm a topic and I'm trying to get my thoughts in order for a presentation or a, or a paper or something. Um, what is nice about Bubbles is that um, it will it sort of develops this, this color scheme for you, and depending on the hierarchy, it changes the color. Um, so it's very easy to see your hierarchy. It's also very easy to export this or copy it into a presentation or paper. So it's one of many mind mapping tools out there, but I, this is a simple, really easy to use one. Um, and so related to that is Poplet, which has another very cute name. This is also a mind mapping tool, but it's slightly more sophisticated in that you can draw in images, uh, links to videos, you can uh, put in web links. It's very handy just for creating sort of a visual view. Visual view, that's redundant, but um, just for creating something visual for a project that you're working on. And like Bubbles, it can be exported and put into papers and projects, et cetera. Okay. So Pearl Trees is a bit of a combination between Poplet and Bubbles. Um, Pearl Trees, you got you sort of love it or lump it with pearl trees. Um, but pearl trees is um, sort of a, a, a mind mapping tool for websites. So if you are interested in showing how there are various connections between the sites that you follow and you want to be able to track that, uh, pearl trees is very handy for that. Um, and other people can see your pearl trees if you want to. So it's a wonderful way of describing, uh, you can see other people's pearl trees as well. And it's just a great way of finding new content, new online content. It's really, really worth taking a few minutes to explore pearl trees if you've never looked at it before. Okay. So Dippity. Dippity is handy um, for showing a timeline. But what's nice about it is that you can put images in here. You can put web links. Um, if, you're doing, uh, if you've got a whole bunch of, say, old photographs, uh, old documents that you'd like to show a chronological order for, you can in a very quickly and in a very visually appealing way put something together. This is one on Steve Jobs' life and career, but there's a million ways to use Dippity. Okay, Delicious. Now Delicious is, is granted, it's been around for ages. Um, half of you are probably on Delicious, I'm not sure. Um, but I like it because it is a social bookmarking tool, meaning it's a way for you to keep track of all the websites you want to follow. And instead of being attached to APC, um, it, it's, a, a, it's a website that you can get to from wherever. But it's also nice because you see how many other people have saved that site. Um, you can see their tags that they've used. You can also see other people's lists of links, which can be very handy as well. Um, I think Delicious is just one of the most ro robust of these types of sites, which is why I recommend using it. Um, you also see that I've got my own custom login, and we'll, I sh we sh we'll be talking, and Helen will be talking about this throughout the course, but creating an online identity for yourself, you see that's the photograph that I use for a great number of websites that I'm on, um, so that my identity, can, people will know I'm the, it's the same person who's putting these things together. So Pinterest, Pinterest is rather new. Um, it's, it's a virtual built bulletin board for images, basically. This is one that we're using over at uh, Information and Library Services at JBS, um, just tracking new eBooks that come in, new movies that we're offering, um, interesting library related stuff that we find. Um, but Pinterest can be used for just loads of things that you find online and you want to be able to keep track of. Um, very, it's very, very hot. It was, um, Pinterest I think was the most popular or second most popular search on US Google last year, which gives you an idea of just how massive Pinterest has become very quickly. Okay, so Lightshot. Um, now we're getting more into the tools that help you organize your, your data um, or manipulate it, I guess. Um, Lightshot is just an extremely lightweight, easy to install and very, very fast. Um, image clipping tool. Um, you can make a snapshot of your screen, a snapshot of a little image. You easily can um, upload it to a place like Twitter or Facebook, but you can easily just save it online. Um, and it's free. And it's just really fast to use, which is why I like it. Um, and then I think perhaps the cutest site online right now is called PicMonkey, which you can't really tell from looking at this screenshot, unfortunately. But PicMonkey is free software, free for now at least. It was done by the people who set up Picnic, which folded last spring. PicMonkey is an image manipulation tool. You can do almost anything on Picnic, well, sorry, with PicMonkey that you can do with Photoshop, but you don't have the 
huge overhead of Photoshop, and it's free, you know. Um, so you can add text, you can add, um, you can overlay images, you can you can crop, you can add. I mean, it's just it's so incredibly easy to use, and it's very very cute. It gives you the cutest little messages as you go through. All right, so that's PicMucky. Um, ScreenLeap. So ScreenLeap is very handy if you are um, having a meeting with somebody, but that you're not face to face. So if you need to share a screen. Um, Again, this is free software. You don't, it's uh, like something massive like WebEx is obviously something you need a license for and pay for. But this is a way you can have an online meeting for free. It runs on Java. So as long as you've got Java running, it's, you just click a button and you're good to go. OK. Screencast-O-Matic. This is another one that's been around for a while. Um, but it, it allows you to make little movies or screencasts of what's going on on your screen. We use it a lot at the library for making video tutorials, but um, it's a great way for just explaining stuff that, um, that you find online or how to do something. Great way for teaching people, because what you do is you just click, 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 it makes your little movie, and you can easily send it off to someone. Very easy to use, very easy way to make, make videos of what's going on on your screen. OK, and now for something a little bit more fun. This is something called Name Check. Right, so name check is a way of seeing, um, uh, keep, how do I say it? Sorry, a way of um, making a, a sort of a consistent identity for yourself online. So you can take a, a login name that you'd like to use across social media sites. You can type it in to name check, and it will check a myriad of social networking sites to find the availability of that name. So this is M. Westbury. It's the one that I like to use. And it will tell me um, whether it's taken or available. The ones that are taken are the ones that I've likely already made an account on anyway. Um, but it's also just a great way of finding out new social media sites that are out there. Quite honestly, I don't know what half of these are. It would be fun to sit down and explore all of them someday. OK, so the next one is Flavors Me. Um, Flavors Me is a way of collating all your online identities or links to all those identities in one place. It's a bit like a business card, an online business card. There's a competing product called About Me. They both are virtually the same. But what's nice is um, when people come to this page, all right, and I can direct people to this page, they find out how to get to my Twitter account, my Facebook account, my LinkedIn account, the blog that I write, um, other blogs that I contribute to. They can see my Twitter feed. This is a totally customizable. So you can put links to whatever you want or just have one. Um, but it's really, really nice. Instead of listing all your online identity places, you can just give people this one flavors.me link or about me link. Um, and it just streamlines your, the information you give out. It's very nice. OK, Furly. Furly is, you probably have seen bit.ly or other ways of shortening URLs. Furly is yet another one of these ways of doing that. Um, but with Furly, what you can do is actually bundle a few URLs in one place. So that's very handy. Uh, let's say you are sending out a list of links to somebody. But instead of one, cluttering up a blog piece or an email with a whole bunch of links, you can use Furly, which will bundle all those links together. And then when somebody clicks on the links you send, it will then sort of unfurl. and. Um, and show you all the links that you're sending. So it's just a way, a nice way of sending out clutter-free messages. And then if you're wondering if what you're sending out is actually fresh content, or if it's been around for ages, and you know, did you scoop it? Or has this been around for a year or two online? You can use a tool called, is it old? And it is very honest. Um, so you type in what you're looking for, and it will tell you. But you know, it doesn't always, it's not a bad thing necessarily if it is old, but you just should know, right? Um, but it's also very, it's very picky. So if it's been tweeted about merely twice, it says, oh, you might want to be cautious about this. People are already tweeting extensively about this. So, you know, take it with a pinch of salt. But I find it very handy to know, you know, if, if I'm the very first one to tweet about it or not. Apparently, this is starting to smell a little bit. <laughs> okay. So another one of my favorite tools is Scoopit. This is absolutely fantastic. Scoopit is a way of curating digital information, online information. 
everyone would like to be a famous blogger, probably. You'd love to be able to write insightful blog pieces on a weekly basis and have them on your blog, and, it's, and, and everyone will admire you for it. But to be perfectly honest, not everybody has the time or inclination to do that. However, this is a way of showing your expertise on a particular topic and bring together websites, news stories, things that are breaking or new in, that, in, the, in your area, and create, a, um, and create a scoop it site. Now, once you create these things, if someone, say, was doing a search for, for new learning tools or something like that, this scoop it site will come right up in Google. So I've noticed that Google is finding scoop it sites really, really easily. You may have stumbled across ones that your colleagues have, or, at, or people at other universities have put together. It will suggest sites for you, which is also very handy, but it's also just a snap to add them to your, um, to your scoop it account. So that's definitely one you should explore down the line. Okay, and then there's issue, issue, issue. Um, this makes you look like a very professional uh, publishing company. Um, issue is wonderful because you can take any old document you've got on PDF and it will make it into a lovely magazine that people can look at online. So great for brochures, great for invitations, great for all sorts of things. This is a brochure that a library put out for 2011, 2012. Look at the number of views it got. Seven, over 17,000. And I highly doubt those were all the library's users who hit it. It was because it was online. Other people were finding it as well. So a great way to get content out there for other people to see. Okay. Slide share. This is one that you'll likely be exploring quite a bit in this course. SlideShare is a place to put up your presentation so that other people can see them. What? Someone's going to see my content? Well, you can stop people from downloading them, but you know, you do a presentation at a conference, people are going to want to see your presentation. This is a way you can make it without actually having to send them the slides. No, but you don't need extra special software to view something on SlideShare. And what's nice about SlideShare is that you can use it to discover new content for yourself or see how other people are putting presentations together to get new ideas for yourself. Um, so I, I really, really like SlideShare. Things that I put up on SlideShare that I think aren't going to get any you know, views whatsoever a week later have been viewed 100 times. I don't know by whom. I don't know what they're doing with the information, but oh, I think that's kind of neat. I hope I'm not scaring anybody. Helen will talk about if you don't want to share, you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Um, Storify. So I like Storify because it takes a whole bunch of digital, um, a whole bunch of things that you, that you create online. So say tweets, Facebook entries, images, blog posts, news stories that you might find. And you can bring it together all into one place, sort of one magazine, if you will. Okay. This, it's really, really hard to take a screenshot of something that's put out on Storify because it's just so extensive and vast. But there was a snow at McEwen University in Canada last spring, and there were all of these tweets about it, and someone put together a Storify um, about it, brought all of the images and tweets and everything else all into one place so pe people could just view and didn't have to go searching for it all online. It's actually a wonderful way to summarize a conference yeah, or some other major event. And you'll, Storify comes up in Google searches all the time. Um, it's good to know about it. Okay, Academia EDU. Anybody here on Academia EDU? Oh, so half the, half the room. <laughs> okay, for those of you who don't know what it is, is it like Facebook but for academics? A lot of Cambridge researchers are on Academia EDU. It, it's got a worldwide scope. But it's a great way to network with other people locally, but also around the world. This is the um, Academia EDU profile for an old colleague of mine who's now in Canada. Um, but he puts up links to, well, lets people know what his current research is, links to papers that he can actually make links to, um, recommended reading, uh, what's just going on in his life, classes that he's teaching, etc. So just a great way to just keep up to date his academic profile, and then he can keep that separate from personal stuff that you might say put on Facebook. Okay, Lanyard. I really, really like Lanyard. Um, Lanyard is a social networking site, but for conferences. So you may go to a conference and you may see that there's a way to sign up to Lanyard um, for that particular conference. When you do that, you find out who's coming to the conference, what Twitter accounts they're on. Um, 
very often there are links to the conference materials, but I think the, the real value of this is that later on you can find out what other conferences people are going to if it happens to be one that's on Lanyard. So I've discovered all sorts of great conferences that are going on in, in information science and usability and libraries in the UK that I wouldn't have known about otherwise um, because I'm notified when people who I went to one conference with are now signed up to go to another conference. It's very handy. Okay. Remember the milk? Uh, this has been around for a long time, but it's just a time, it's just a, basically a calendaring tool. Uh, it's a way to keep track of your to-do list. Um, and you can actually integrate it with Outlook or with Google Calendar. Um, it's just no fuss, very easy to look at screen. Um, and of course, there's mobile versions of it well that will sync with the online version. So if you've got an, um, an iPad or iPhone or something, um, you can easily see your to-do list from there. And it's also, it's just really, really easy to use. I really like Remember the Milk very much. Okay. And then finally, sometime or another, you have to get work done. <laughs> and you don't, you know, it's, uh, and, and all of these online tools sometimes can be quite distracting. So there's a tool called Focus Booster, which I really like. Focus Booster is based on the Pomodoro technique of working in short bursts, taking a break, go back to work. So by default, it's set up with 25 minute um, chunks of time, but you can customize that. Um, and then the bar, it's amazing how quickly 25 minutes goes, but you push yourself for 25 minutes, then you get to take a break for 10, 15 minutes, then you come back and do another burst for 25 minutes. And it's just by the end, you've, you've been, you're productive, but you're also not burned out as well. And I think every three or four bursts, you get a longer break for say 30 minutes. Of course, you don't have to follow it religiously, but it's kind of a nice way to structure your time. And then finally, there's Stay Focused. This is an add-on for Chrome only right now, the Chrome browser. So it doesn't work on IE, it doesn't work on Firefox, only on Chrome, but Chrome is a great browser. Um, and what's lovely for this is that you can, if you're really finding that gobs and gobs of your attention is being sucked into using Facebook or Twitter or any particular website, and you really just need to turn that off. You can say, look, I'll allow myself 20 minutes a day for Facebook, and after that, I'll be locked out. And that's what Stay Focus will do for you. Um, and you can get back in, but you can set up a puzzle challenge to make, that, to make you think twice about doing that. And if you are a serious, have serious problems, as, as I do, um, you can set a nuclear option where it just will not let you in. You can go to another browser, that's true. But on Chrome, <laughs> it will not let you in. Okay, which is maybe, I mean, it's just a nice little reminder that, you know, get back to work a little bit. Um, but not to say that these tools are in any way not integrated with your work, because many of them will pro likely become, or are already. But, you know, sometimes you do have to turn off some chatter and stay focused. So that's the last of the 30 things. I, to be perfectly honest, I haven't been timing myself, so I don't know if I've gone over my 30 or not, but I think... All right, okay, I'm not sure. I think I babbled a bit. Anyway, um, I have one more slide. Um, so I'm, I love chatting and I love to um, be in touch with people. So this is my, uh, Judge Info is actually my library's Twitter, but my personal one is Meg underscore librarian. And all of these tools are listed on a blog that we maintain at the JBS Information and Library Services called New Media for Researchers blog, uh, where you'll find all sorts of great links to um, new media tools, uh, t interesting Twitter tools, interesting blogging tools, et cetera. Um, and we have been publishing a lot over the summer, but as soon as, um, but now that term's starting, we're gonna be adding new content to that regularly. Okay, so thank you very much for listening to that long rambling. Okay.